I have only uh, four slides for sharing in relation to this uh, section. Um, all these slides uh, carry a keyword uh, started with T. Okay. And when we talk about green building, um, it's not only about individual buildings. It's about the total built environment. Okay. Uh, so Hong Kong is actually a pretty good example. So in the compact build form, makes the use dense uh, with very good walkability and also well served by uh, public transportation. And also for the picture, similar to the window from your residence in Hong Kong, you can see typical community in Hong Kong that people can easily uh, with very good accessibility to the country parks and the rural areas. So, so one thing that probably I would like to advocate is that when we talk about green building, the total built environment is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's not only about energy saving and also decarbonize, but also that we should use the opportunity to address other, say, UN SDGs, like air quality, biodiversity, and also a quality and healthy living urban environment. Okay, let me try it. Okay. The second slide is about transparency and technology. Okay. There are different indicators about what's the performance of green building or the built environment in each city. So here I use the energy intensity as one of the commonly adopted indicators by APAC and others. We can see that Hong Kong's energy intensity is one of the best when compared with other cities in Asia, Europe, or North America. Better than Japan, better than Singapore, better than many European countries, certainly better than US and some others. But certainly there's room for improvement. So that's why, as I presented earlier, we launched the Hong Kong's energy saving plan for Hong Kong's built environment in 2015. We would like to compare with ourselves because different places have different contexts, culture, and challenges. So, as I said earlier, we set a more ambitious energy intensity saving or reduction target higher than that set by APEC. And we are getting towards our target step by step. First, it's about togetherness or partnership. Okay? We need to work with other, say, European countries. Uh, companies like yours and others so that we can share experience and work together to accelerate the decarbonization. In Hong Kong, as mentioned earlier, instead of the government do our own internal discussion to update our climate action plan, we talk about two years through the SDC, the Council for Social Development, to have a bottom-up approach to engage the people, to educate the people before we formalize or update our real energy and carbon reduction target. That's the process, okay? And we are glad that uh, we got the report I said earlier, so that uh, through the policy address, we launched our real target and we update further our climate action plan. The last T is about target and timeline. Climate change is an urgent challenge. Okay, it's a tall order, it's challenging. At the same time, that it set a time limit for us to meet certain target. Okay, so that's why we took this opportunity based on the SDC recommendation. We, Hong Kong, announced that we would try to meet the carbon neutrality before 2050. It's not easy. While we have met our peak around 2014, um, it's about some 30 years for us to reach the, the ground zero. But I think through collaboration, through the support say, by Hong Kong USD, we would be able to reduce our carbon footprint to meet the target. To conclude and to add that, in Hong Kong, there are three major carbon emission contributors. Firstly, it's about energy generation and consumption. And 90% of the electricity generated in Hong Kong are consumed in buildings like this. So that's why green buildings are very important. Second, it's about the transportation and mobility. Accounts for about 20% of Hong Kong's carbon footprint. And the total build form actually would affect how people 
communicate and also moving around. So that's, that's why I have to stress that the total built environment is equally important. And Hong Kong is going to support more electric vehicles in addition to walkability. We launched a large scale subsidy plan to help the existing residential buildings to upgrade their power supply for EV charging at home. It's probably one of the largest scale of its kind on Earth, as far as I understand. If the scheme is going to be successfully realized within three years, one out of every four parking space in apartments in Hong Kong will become EV charging ready, 25% in three years. So the subsidy scheme has been open for application more than a month, okay? The initial response has been encouraging, but I will encourage more people if you are living in existing housing estates, you need to upgrade the EV charging facilities. Please make the good use of this subsidy scheme. Last but not least, it's about waste. Waste account for about less than 10% of the remaining Hong Kong's carbon footprint. So waste reduction is very important. And we are pushing ahead a bill, we call the municipal solar waste charging bill in the electrical. And we hope to get the support by the lawmakers. And I hope with your support, the bill could be passed soon so that we can further reduce Hong Kong's carbon footprint. And at the same time, we buildings are related to all these. We have to make sure that our buildings, both new and old, to reduce energy consumption, to support green mobility, and help to reduce waste and support clean recycling. So I'll end here. Thank you.